Hello, and welcome to this section of the Differential Equations Tutor. Uh, here we're going to close out this method of what we call undetermined coefficients uh, for non-homogeneous linear differential equations with constant coefficients. What a mouthful. Uh, we're going to close it out by working uh, a little bit of a challenging problem in my opinion. I think it's a good problem to culminate with because conceptually it's not hard to follow. You know exactly what you need to do, but rolling up your sleeves and doing it just takes some practice. Uh, so let's just dive right into it. It doesn't look really any harder than anything we have. Uh, really. So you have a second order differential equation, d squared plus 6d plus 10, operating on our function x of t, is going to be equal to 80 times e to the t times the sine of t. So the first thing we notice is the left hand operator is a little more complicated than what we've typically been using. And the right hand side that really jumps out of this, this forcing function is quite a bit more complicated than what we've had so far. Uh, but Still, it looks pretty comfortable, uh, you know, familiar, so we'll be able to handle it. Uh, but take it step by step. So what we're going to do is form this homogeneous version, and that's going to be um, d squared plus 6d plus 10 operating on x is equal to 0. Right? So we just take the right-hand side, throw it in the trash can, and we solve what the equation is going to do just by the fact that we built it this way. These coefficients and these derivatives basically describe what the, how the system is constructed. The right-hand side basically describes what we're putting into the system as an input. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. And, uh, you know, typically what you would do is, is do something like, uh, you know, r squared plus 6r plus 10 is equal to 0. And you try to factor that, but you realize you really can't do that uh, because 2 times 5 is 10, and there's no way I can really use that to make 6. 1 times 10 is 10. There's no way to make that 6. So sometimes you just have to use uh, the uh, quadratic formula, or you can just use your calculator. But if you're doing it totally by hand, the quadratic formula, r is going to equal negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And I know it's a little bit old school to do all this stuff by hand, but, you know, it's good to know where everything comes from. So negative b is going to be negative 6 plus or minus square root 6 is b, so 6 squared is 36, minus 4ac. So 4 is this, a is 1, and c is 10. So 4 times 1 times 10 is 40, so it's going to be minus 40, like this. And on the bottom is 2 times a, 2 times 1 is 2. So see, it's not that big of a deal. And so what we'll have is r is going to equal negative 6 plus or minus the square root. 36 minus 40 is negative 4 over 2. So I think you can see where this is going. This is going to be negative 6 plus or minus. Square root of negative 4 is 2i over 2. So r is going to equal uh, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we'll have negative 3 plus or minus 2 divided by 2 is just 1. So we'll have this. So we have a conjugate pair like we always do when we have these complex answers. Negative 3 plus i, negative 3 minus i. And it all comes from, you know, the way things are constructed here in the, uh, in the quadratic, right? So we have everything we need to construct the solution uh, of the homogeneous version. H of t is going to be equal to, looking at this, the real part's a negative 3. So it's c1 e to the negative 3t times cosine of t. The 1 comes from the 1 here, right? And the negative 3 goes into there. Plus c2 e to the negative 3t coming from here times the sine of t coming from here. So this is very, very important, just like all of these problems so far. This h of t 